USS Bainbridge honors one of our earliest American heroes and influential leaders of the United States Navy. Serving under the command of Commodore Edward Preble, he was part of a young group of young officers known as Preble's Boys, who became the foundation of American success at sea during the quasi-war with France, the conflicts with the Barbary Pirates, and the War of 1812. As captain of the Schooner Retaliation, his first naval command, then Lieutenant Bainbridge fought the French throughout the Caribbean. At one point, forced to surrender to a superior French force, he not only successfully negotiated his own release, but the release of more than 300 other captive Americans. Promoted to Master Commandant and later to Captain, in 1800, Bainbridge sailed on a diplomatic mission to the Mediterranean, where in command of the frigate George Washington, he delivered tribute to the Day of Algiers, as was customary to ensure the safety of American shipping. At the demand of the day, he then traveled to Constantinople, where he would pave the way for an eventual American treaty with the Ottoman Empire. In 1803, Bainbridge would return to the Mediterranean, where, under the command of Commodore Preble, the United States was engaged in a conflict with the Barbary pirates. Bainbridge, who was not yet 30, commanded the 36-gun frigate Philadelphia. While pursuing a smaller but faster Barbary warship, the Philadelphia ran aground near the harbor of Tripoli. Surrounded by a number of smaller and more maneuverable ships, Bainbridge surrendered the ship rather than risking the 307 lives of his crew. He, along with his crew, were imprisoned. The Philadelphia was refloated and refitted by the pirates, but was destroyed during a raid led by then Lieutenant Stephen Decatur, a raid that Bainbridge himself helped plan using ciphered messages to Commodore Preble while imprisoned. After being released from his 18-month captivity, Bainbridge spent several years in various assignments before achieving his greatest accomplishment while in command of USS Constitution, Old Ironsides, off the coast of Brazil. The December 29, 1812 defeat of HMS Java in what has been described as the perfect frigate duel. Despite being wounded twice, Bainbridge led his sailors to victory against the pride of the Royal Navy. Today, USS Constitution is the oldest commissioned US Navy warship. Birthed in Boston, Old Ironsides continues to carry a replica of HMS Java's wheel, the original of which was removed from the battered British ship following the battle and was used to replace Constitution's own destroyed wheel. Commodore Bainbridge would later command the naval dockyards in Boston, supervising the construction of USS Independence, the United States' first ship of the line and the era's equivalent to a 20th century aircraft carrier. In 1820, he would return to the Mediterranean as a squadron commander embarked in USS Independence. Upon his return to the United States, he served in a variety of positions, including as a naval commissioner between 1825 and 1828, promoting many of the training and manning ideas still in place today. Bainbridge would eventually leave the service in 1833, dying in Philadelphia on 27 June of that year. Today's ceremony is a time-honored tradition that began with the commissioning of our first ship, a captured British schooner, the Margareta, in 1775. Since then, thousands of ships have undergone this transition from a silent hull to a living warship. Our commissioning crew, hereafter known as plank owners, are in formation behind you and ready. And salute. on the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem will be presented by the Navy Band Southeast Region, directed by musician first class Kenny Oliver.
day we look to you and invite your presence aboard the USS Brainbridge, DDG-96. Your eyes have seen the numerous hours of dedication and exceptional contributions of the many hundreds of co-laborers that have brought this great achievement to fruition. Now bless all these hearts, souls, and hands that have brought us to this tremendous day. We ask your blessing upon this ship and her crew. May each man and woman know your protection as we take Bainbridge to sea, always allowing your hands to steal our helm. May your blessing be upon the community of Fort Lauderdale for the tremendous support and hospitality they have shown us. Hasten the restoration of the community from the damages caused by Hurricane Wilma. In you we put our trust. Amen. Now as my shipbuilders went about their business, Commander John Dory and his exceptional crew were there alongside my shipbuilders preparing for the time when we would call, they would call the ship their ship. In the course of building Bainbridge, remarkable things did happen. Relationships and lasting friendships were formed. Mutual respect was earned. And together, sailors and shipbuilders turned cold steel into the vibrant ship you see here today. Commander Dory, as you and your crew take your hard-earned place in the fleet, let me say it was a distinct pleasure and honor to have all of you with us in Bath. Officers and crew of Bainbridge, you are the latest in a long line of United States Navy sailors who have repeated this proud tradition of bringing a ship from cold steel to living instrument of national policy. Captain Dory has made it clear that you are a cut above. This crew represents the very best the nation has to offer with sailors representing 38 states and eight countries. You serve proudly in the most magnificent Navy in the world and as the commissioning crew, you'll set the tone for this fine ship and carve out her reputation for years to come. Master Chief Collins, from what I've seen of the standards that you and Captain Dory have set, Bainbridge is headed for greatness. Today, you are all destroyermen. As you bring this great ship to life, I encourage you to remember your namesake, Commodore Bainbridge. But just as important, I want you to remember the 200 plus years of warfighting excellence the name Bainbridge represents. From DD-1's patrols with the Asiatic Fleet to the tin cans of World War II and the exploits of the most famous destroyerman, Arleigh Burke, to the crews of Arleigh Burke class destroyers who launched the first salvos in the most recent global war on terror. Destroyermen have a long and proud history of service. Commander Dory, PEO ships and Bath Iron Works have created this warship out of steel, composite materials, electronic components, and weapon systems made by the finest defense contractors in the world. You and your crew must now dedicate yourself to mastering this beautiful ship with all of its complexity to be able to deliver the goods wherever and whenever the President of the United States orders you to go. Your leadership is that enabler that will allow this crew to fully capitalize on the warfighting capability built into this ship. I and the Surfland staff are standing by to assist you in achieving deployment readiness. I am counting on you to give your best effort to train this crew to be mission ready. Welcome to the Atlantic Fleet Naval Surface Force and in following the footsteps of those former Bainbridge crews and fellow destroyermen, it's now your turn to go make history. I would like to acknowledge the superior leadership of Commander John Dory, Captain John Ingram, Captain Mike Stanton, Commander John Ailes, Mr. Stan Welliver, and the skilled craftsmen and women of Bath Iron Works for your exceptional efforts. Your overwhelming success was clearly reflected in Bainbridge's super, superlative super trial, where she was deemed best in class by the inspector and earned the right to fly four brooms atop her mast. A long-standing Navy tradition that represents a clean sweep in all functional areas. You've set the bar high for all to follow and I could not be prouder of your collective efforts. It's said that a ship acquires a personality all of her own, born of the ship's namesake, fostered by the sponsor, and strengthened by each and every sailor that mans her rails. Commander Dory, it is you and your crew who will make up the soul of this ship through the collective experiences that you bring from all walks of life and all corners of our nation. You will be the lifeblood of DDG-96 as you prepare to add your own chapter to Bainbridge's extraordinary legacy of service. 
Please know that you do so with the hopes and prayers of a grateful nation. When I look at this magnificent ship right here in our port, I feel very proud. What an honor it is for the entire state of Florida, but particularly those of us in Broward County to have this fine warship being dedicated right here in our own backyard. The United States Navy has a long and distinguished history in Fort Lauderdale. In fact, Fort Lauderdale is widely considered to be the premier liberty port on the east coast of the United States. In 1942, Fort Lauderdale was selected to be a naval aviation facility for training naval aviators during World War II. Fort Lauderdale Naval Air Station was also the training ground for supporting air crew and ground maintenance personnel. In 1943, one of the nation's great sons and former presidents, George H.W. Bush, came to the Fort Lauderdale Air Naval Station to train as a pilot. Bush graduated from Phillips Academy in Massachusetts on his 18th birthday. That same day, he enlisted in the United States Navy as a seaman second class. He received his wings and was commissioned in June of 1943 while still 18 years old. And I understand him to be the youngest pilot in the Navy at that particular time. Admiral Nowakowski, would you please join me and place Bainbridge in commission? Will the guest please rise? Ship's Company, Aten Hut. As authorized by the Secretary of the Navy and for the President of the United States, I hereby place United States Ship Bainbridge in commission. May God bless and guide this warship and all who sail in her. I'm going to feel very proud, proud to serve my country. When we pulled in here, there was a cruise liner over there, and they, as we were going by, they were cheering and screaming for us, and it made me feel real proud to be part of the Navy. It's something that both myself and my father have done. He was on the previous Bainbridge, so it's a family thing, pride. Executive Officer, hoist the colors and the commissioning pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, I direct your attention to the mast as we hoist the colors and commissioning pennant. Chief Petty Officer Hill, hoist the colors and commissioning pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Will the guests please be seated? Captain, the commissioning pennant is closed up. Very well. I never start anything without finishing it, and that's how I feel about the ship. You know, we started commissioning it, and now we have to make it a great ship. You know? And if need be, we're going to take it to war, and we're going to be the best ship out there. For me, my experience is, is working with outstanding people who, you know, work hard and believe in teamwork, because I'm a team player. I prefer, you know, everybody to be in sync, you know, one thing, get the job done. I will now read my orders from Chief of Naval Personnel to Commander John M. Dory, United States Navy. Subject, Bureau of Naval Personnel Orders 3303, dated 26 November 2003. When directed, detach present duty and proceed to pre-commissioning unit Bainbridge for duties in conjunction with fitting out. Upon commissioning of USS Bainbridge, report for duty as commanding officer. Signed. J.W. Towns III, Rear Admiral, United States Navy, Deputy Chief of Naval Personnel. Admiral Carr, United States Ship Bainbridge is in commission and I am in command. It's kind of unique what we're doing the pre-com process. I'd say about 40% of the crew has never been to sea before. Uh, we've got a lot of experienced players. We've got a lot of people that have been on prior DDGs that we, now that we have so many DDGs in the fleet so it was it's a little different from the first time I commissioned the ship we actually had very few people that knew anything about a destroyer or a DDG uh, destroyer uh, this time around we got more people who know it we've got uh, a heck of a good engineering department on here executive officer set the first watch aye aye sir officer of the deck set the watch aye aye sir the officer of the deck is the commanding officer's direct representative and, while on watch, 
is responsible for the safety and operations of the ship and crew. The long glass is the traditional symbol of an officer of the deck's authority in a ship of the line. Today, we are pleased to welcome LaRouf Bud Poitras, a crew member in USS Bainbridge DD-246, who will assist us today in setting the first watch. Passing the ship's long glass to ship serviceman First Class Lawrenson, United States Navy, our first officer of the deck. Of note, Petty Officer Lawrenson first qualified as officer of the deck in USS Bainbridge CGN-25. After coming down here and seeing the presentation and everything that actually goes into it, it really is a great honor, and I didn't understand how great it was in, until just now. The watch is set. Very well. The biggest thrill for me is uh, taking those 100,000 horsepower and be able to turn those screws back behind us to uh, take the ship where she needs to go, to put ordnance on target, and to get the ship and their shipmates back home. It's an excellent opportunity. I think you know that's why I did it. And it's really neat, you know, to be able to say that you know I did have friends and family help build the ship and being able to sail on a boat that you know they had a part in. So I mean. Uh, I think it's really, you know, it's, it's a good thing. We are fortunate today to have our sponsor, Commodore Bainbridge's great, great, great granddaughter, Mrs. Susan Bainbridge Hay, here with us today. Mrs. Hay, I'd be honored if you'd join me and give the order to man your ship and bring her to life. The USS Constitution, birthed in Boston, is the Navy's oldest commissioned ship. William Bainbridge was one of her commanders in her long and glorious career. He is known to have said of the ship, never has she failed us. To the officers and crew of the USS Bainbridge, named for William Bainbridge, and the Navy's newest commissioned ship, I would like to say, may she never fail you. The most important thing to me is the fact that my family has an identity with the Navy and with the series of ships that have been named Bainbridge. Commodore Bainbridge was my great, great, great grandfather. And I feel very proud that we can continue the tradition to be part of the lives of the ships that were named for him. Officers and crew of the Bainbridge, man the ship and bring her to life. USS Bainbridge salutes you. We are proud of our ship and to serve in your great Navy. Ready, two. Best part for me was making chief. To be honest, making chief and um, having and showing my guys how, how we did it last time, teaching them the, the rules of the road so we can get to the storm. I think it, you know, it's, a, it's a blessing to actually be able to be here. You know, most people won't do it. You know, I'm carrying on a family tradition. My dad retired uh, 20 years in the Navy, just carrying on a family tradition. You know, the opportunity to be able to carry on that tradition is a, my high point every day. Captain, the ship is manned and ready. Very well. Commodore, USS Bainbridge is manned and ready. I report to duty to the Regional Support Organization, Norfolk. Very well. 
Dr. Etter, request permission to break your flag. Here we go. Very well. Executive Officer, break the flag of the Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Research, Development, and Acquisition. Aye, aye, sir. Chief Petty Officer Hill, break the flag of the Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Research, Development, and Acquisition. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> Captain, the flag has been broken. Very well. Bainbridge's commercial off-the-shelf is easily upgradable, it's easily redoable and to enhance the weapon system and to keep up with modern technology. So I'm not using system, pieces of systems in my combat systems that are four to five, sometimes maybe ten years old. They're as fresh as off-the-shelf as the commercial industry can provide. Ladies and gentlemen, Commander John M. Dory, United States Navy, Officer, United States Ship Bainbridge. Will the guests please be seated? Ship's Company, Parade, Rest. When I chose the motto, Competence, Dedication, and Discipline, I did so because it typified to me the service of Commodore Bainbridge, but today it typifies for me the performance of the men and women that I'm very fortunate to serve with on this ship. They willingly joined the Navy, some as recently as last summer, others upwards of 20 or more years ago. And whether it's one year or 20, each continues to show their patriotism daily. I continue to see their desire to do something good for the nation, something meaningful for their country. But the best ship, weapons, and crew are only the beginning. The support we receive each day from the people of this nation is our Navy's greatest strength. And no place on earth is the support for our military greater than here in South Florida. You overwhelm us, especially in this trying time, with your kindness, generosity, hospitality. This truly is a very special place. We thank you for the invitation to commission our ship here, and we thank you for your unwavering support that made today a reality for USS Bainbridge. Port Everglades will always be our home away from home, and we look forward to the day when fair winds may blow us back to South Florida and Port Everglades again. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Ship's Company, Octin Hood. Will the guests please rise as Lieutenant J.G. Joshua Calhoun leads us in the benediction. Father in heaven, we dedicate the USS Bainbridge to you, along with the people of the United States. Enable the Bainbridge to be a destroyer of evil and a conduit of life and blessing. Bless the Bainbridge and her crew as she sails away from Fort Lauderdale. May the guidance of your hand ensure the safety of the ship and crew en route to our new home port in Norfolk, Virginia. May the grace of our Lord, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all as we go in peace. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony.